It's been 50 years since the first Pride March in the UK, led by the likes of the Gay Liberation Front, people like Ted Brown, all of these wonderful ancestors who've paved the way for us and who continue to inspire us and energize us to keep up with this good fight. It's really, really important to be celebrating our wins and our milestones, and especially moments in time when we've really come together as a community. To a point now where we're able to be more out, more expressive, be ourselves. I think looking back on your queer history and seeing the progress that we're making is really important. But I also think it's just important to have fun and celebrate the freedoms that we have now. In another 50 years, I hope our community is more accepted. 50 years time, I'd really love to see things being less difficult for our community than they are now. To be able to like marry and stuff and just settle down with somebody and for that to just be normal. Like parents having kids who have same-sex partnerships and different genders, different sexualities and people just being free and not being persecuted for living freely. As we move towards liberation and transcending beyond the gender binaries, oppressive structures, all our hope for trans, non-binary and gender non-conforming people is some rest and relaxation because we're tired. What I really, really hope to see in the next 50 years is for us to remember that really we are stronger when we're together and in solidarity with one another and that we come together um, to support one another truly against all oppressive structures. I think people need to be talking about more in regards to the LGBT community. Trans healthcare, it's in such a bad place right now. They are so backlogged. We need, we need a lot of support. We need a lot of help. The kind of waiting lists and the kind of financial costs um, in regards to like transitioning and how that really sets a lot of people back. The pullback and the kind of resistance against trans and non-binary rights, like the trans and non-binary community are some of the most marginalised in society and even within the queer community. Um, and while there is increasing conversation around it, there's also increasing transphobia and like awful bigoted rhetoric in the mainstream media and that's being normalised. I think right now what's most important is for everyone to really and truly show up for the trans community that's been singled out in the most horrific ways possible. Even for example with the conversion therapy that's still being allowed for trans people. Why was it applicable to some members of our community and not trans people? And so that's also an incredibly important challenge and issue that we need to be talking about ensuring that conversion therapy is banned for all LGBTIQ plus people and that no one gets left behind. Not even just the trans and queer members of our community, we need the rest of the LGBT community to be talking about it as well. I think whether you are cis and queer or cis and heterosexual, people need to be talking more about trans issues and protecting trans people, not just talking about it, actually doing the work. The first time that I felt pride in being LGBTIQ plus um, or queer was at London Pride in 2019. Um, I think it was the first time that not only did I feel pride in being queer, but I also became really aware of how much work there was still to be done and how much I could be using my relative privilege to support other members of the community and stand in solidarity. I think the first time I celebrated pride and I guess felt the most like gay and liberated was probably 2019 when I came up to my parents. Then that summer I celebrated Pride in London and in Brighton my dad came to Pride with me. So I think that was very like, that was like my gayest year. So I think that's probably the first time I really, really felt Pride. I think I first felt Pride in being LGBTQ is when I went to the queer scene um, in London, um, especially in Vogue Fabrics. And it was just a completely, free space to just celebrate and like express yourself completely authentically. I think one of those first times that I felt pride in in myself um, was when we did a school concert raising money for a local LGBT youth group that I used to attend and just seeing everyone in the audience who had come to rally and support the cause that we were donating to was really special. Then I got to perform a Bollywood dance routine on the national stage of Britain's Got Talent with an international audience that was absolutely terrifying but so affirming to be able to merge all these different identities of myself, my culture, my background, my race, my ethnicity, but also to merge that with my queerness and the ways in which we performed. I was in a dress with all this makeup, challenging all these heteronormative narratives that dominate the entertainment industry and to be able to do that and share that with everyone. It, that, that moment was really liberating. 
I'm proud about um, being openly trans because for a while I wasn't and I think just embracing myself completely. I've just grown so much more into myself and I've become a lot happier. How far I've come in terms of supporting myself financially in my career. When I moved to London in the end of 2020, I kind of just did it and hoped for the best. And I'm still here, so I think I'm just proud of myself. We are still displaying and being aware of so much beauty and creativity and diversity within the community. One thing that I'm really proud of is the fact that I'm here. <laughs> and I, like that in itself is such a feat to be able to be here alive, taking up space that is generally gate-gapped or erased for people like me. I think that's what I'm most proud of.